Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the physics behind blood flow. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to begin by first describing to you the importance of pressure in blood flow. So let's just bring in a blood vessel and this blood vessel has two sides, side one and side two. And each of these sides has a specific pressure. So let's just say in this first instance, we have side one having this pressure and side two having this pressure. So the pressure in side one is greater than the pressure in side two. So which direction will the blood flow in? Well, the blood will flow from side one to side two. And this is because fluid will always flow from the direction of higher hydrostatic pressure to the area of lower hydrostatic pressure. So what if we were to reverse the scenario where side two has a greater pressure than side one? Well, in this case, the blood would flow in the opposite direction from side two to side one. Now, what if we were to take the two sides and make the pressures equivalent? Which way would the blood flow? Well, in this case, the flow would actually be equal to zero. And the reason why is because there is no difference in pressure between the two sides. So this brings up a very important point that is described well by Ohm's law of hemodynamics. So Ohm's law of hemodynamics basically states that the flow is directly proportional to the difference in pressure. So you need a difference in pressure in order to have flow. And what we see with Ohm's law is that the flow is equal to the difference in pressure divided by the resistance of the tube. So this then brings up into the next segment, what is the resistance? So in order to understand what the resistance is, let us bring in a tube, and this tube divides into two segments, this segment and this segment. And as you see here, each of these segments has a different radius. So this segment has a radius equal to three units, and this segment has a radius equal to one unit. So how does the resistance differ in these two segments? Well, in order to understand that, we have to know the relationship between radius and resistance. So the resistance is going to be indirectly proportional to the radius, and specifically the radius to the fourth power. So in other words, a small change in the radius will greatly affect the resistance. So if you were to compare the resistance between these two segments, you would see that this segment with a radius equal to one unit has a resistance 27 times larger than this tube. So the radius is the biggest determinant of the resistance. So now that we understand what resistance is, let's talk about the equivalent resistance or the aggregate resistance, which is something that is very important to understand for blood vessels. Now, the equivalent resistance for blood vessels can be calculated in the same way that we calculate it for electrical circuits. So let's take a look at the equivalent resistance and how to calculate it for a series circuit. So a series circuit looks something like this, where we have two resistors in series. And let's just say that resistor 1 has a resistance of 2 ohms, and resistor 2 has a resistance of 2 ohms. So what is the equivalent resistance of this circuit? Well, in order to calculate this for a series circuit, you would have to add the two resistances together. And what we would get is a, an equivalent resistance of 4. So this particular circuit has an equivalent resistance of 4. So what if we were to take the same circuit and make it into a parallel circuit? How would the equivalent resistance differ? Well, in order to calculate the equivalent resistance for a parallel circuit, you would use this equation. And what we would do when you put the numbers into this following equation and solve for the equivalent resistance, what you would get is an equivalent resistance equal to 1. So what we see here is that even though we have the same two resistors, by orienting them differently, so in this case by organizing them into a parallel circuit, we decreased the equivalent resistance. So this brings up a very important point, that resistors in parallel have a lower equivalent resistance than resistors in series. So this is why when you look at the aggregate resistance of all the capillaries that they have such a low aggregate resistance. The reason why is because all the capillaries are basically organized in parallel which basically causes the equivalent resistance to be very low. So now we're going to talk about the two types of flow. And the first one is laminar flow. So laminar flow looks something like this, where you basically have a fluid and this fluid is flowing in a particular direction. And what you see here inside this fluid is that the velocity vectors, which are represented by the white arrows, are all organized parallel to each other. And this fluid has a specific direction in which it's traveling in. 
So laminar flow is when fluid flows in a streamlined fashion. The fluid has a direction. And we can calculate the flow of laminar flow by using Poisson's law. So Poisson's law is the equation that describes laminar flow. And what we see here is that flow is going to be directly proportional to the difference in pressure and the radius. So the greater the difference in pressure and the greater the radius, the greater the flow rate. And this should make sense because remember that the radius is going to be inversely proportional to the resistance. And if you remember Ohm's law of hemodynamics, Ohm's law states that the flow is equal to the difference in pressure divided by the resistance. And resistance is indirectly proportional to the radius. So by increasing the radius, we decrease the resistance and therefore increase the flow rate. So that's why these two factors are directly proportional to the flow rate. And what we see in the denominator is that the flow rate is going to be indirectly proportional to the viscosity of the fluid symbolized by eta and the length of the tube, which is symbolized by L. So now that we understand what laminar flow is, let's talk about the second type of flow called turbulent flow. So turbulent flow actually looks like this, and it has no particular direction. And this is why it's called wasteful flow, because it really has no direction, and therefore it wastes energy. Now, in order to determine when a fluid will become turbulent flow, you use a specific equation that calculates Reynolds number, which is Re. So Reynolds number is equal to 2 times the radius of the tube times the velocity of the fluid times the density of the fluid divided by the viscosity of the fluid. And basically, when you plug all these numbers in, when the number equals around 2,000 and starts going above that, the flow is said to become turbulent. So the last thing that we'll talk about is cardiac output. So cardiac output is, can be calculated by multiplying the heart rate and the stroke volume. And the cardiac output basically describes how much fluid your, your heart is pumping out per unit time. And for the average human, the average cardiac output is going to be around 5 liters per minute. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you gain a basic understanding of the Ohm's Law of Hemodynamics, how equivalent resistance works, and the general definition of what cardiac output is. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. <music>